Welcome, friends. Welcome back to the kitchen. I'm here again with Gage from Sharp in Hamilton. Yes, sir. And today we're going to talk about choosing a knife. Um, I don't want to overemphasize that it's the most important decision that you're going to make in your kitchen, but it is a very important decision because it affects almost every operation that you do in your kitchen. Yep, I would agree with that. Um, you have to be comfortable with a knife in your hand in order to get the most out of it. 100%. So when I come into your shop in Hamilton, how do you guide me through choosing the correct knife? Yeah, so first I start off just by asking what it is you're looking for. What are your, okay. what are your needs? What, like what, what is it that you want? And the most common response that I get is an all-purpose knife um, sort of in and around the $200 range. Okay. Um, so I'll start off by trying to figure out their the level of maintenance that they're that they're comfortable with okay. so the 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 two big differences are whether we're going to go with a stainless steel with a carbon steel or something in between okay. so um, stainless steel as the name implies will never rust um, will never discolor or get any sort of spots on it um, whereas a carbon steel um, has has advantages like better edge retention and sharpenability but could rust and discolor if it's not kept dry and clean patina Patina, which is a good thing. Some people don't like it. Yep. Um, and, and if you don't want your knife to change and sort of develop character over time, uh, go with the stainless steel. Okay. But if you kind of enjoy things that kind of change and, and tell a story sort of. Well, in that patina, eventually protects the knife. It does, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, you know, it's the first couple months using a carbon steel knife that you really have to be diligent. Well, to your point, once that patina is formed, uh, it does a lot to protect the knife and makes it much easier to to care for. Okay. Um, so, you know, if, if, if we don't want to totally go stainless steel and we don't want to go totally carbon steel, there is an in-between, which would be a stainless clad knife. And those are made in a process called sandmai or, or forge welding, where they take uh, three layers of material, forge them together, yep. um, normally putting two softer pieces of stainless steel on the outside um, of a coarse core layer of steel that's made from carbon steel. Okay. So... Um, if we look at the knife, um, it's a little bit tough to see on some of them, I but there's the a line. yeah, there's a little wavy line close yep. to the edge of the knife there, um, and that's where the carbon or pardon me, that's where the stainless steel um, layers on the outside are coming to an end, and the carbon steel is just poking out beyond that. Okay. So only you know those two to three millimeters right at the edge of the knife could rust if not properly maintained. Um, so it gives you kind of, it allows you to sort of dip your toes into the carbon steel without going all the way in and just kind of test the water. Um, um, and if you like the edge retention and the and the way it cuts and sharpens and all yep. that sort of stuff, and you think you want to move into a fully carbon steel knife, um, you can make that you can decision. Go, go that right. go that way. Yeah. So what if I come to you and say I, I want a knife, but I'm not someone who's going to sharpen it that often? Yeah. Um, so I like to say that I've taken some of some of the guesswork out of it um, okay. because of the way that I test the knives and I and and the, the steel types that we work with. So um, even if you go with a stainless steel knife that arguably has less than desirable edge retention in comparison okay. to to carbon steel, um, the, like for instance, if we look at a knife like this made from R2, which is a type of stainless steel, okay. um, you could even argue that the edge retention on this is better than some of the carbon steels out there. Okay. Um, you may have a more difficult time sharpening this knife. Um, stainless steels can be notoriously difficult to get a really nice keen edge on, okay. but in my experience, R2 is one of the easier stainless steels to sharpen. Uh, uh, because it has that higher Rockwell rating, hardness, durability, it seems okay. to sharpen up a little bit easier. Um, you know, every knife is going to need to be sharpened. So that, that's something to keep in mind. And, and um, you know, I would, I would say if, 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 if you feel like you're going to get into sharpening, if you, if you think it's a, a, a hobby or, or, or like something you want to learn, um, carbon steel is definitely the way to go in my opinion. Okay. It's way more fun to sharpen. There's more to it. There's more you can learn about it. Um, stainless steel sharpening is, is good. Like it's, it's, it's still fun to sharpen any knife in my opinion. Uh, but stainless steels require a couple extra jumps in your progression of, of water stones to get them to the same level. Okay. Um, but I generally will set a home cook just getting into Japanese knives up with a stainless steel knife um, 
and that way they don't have to worry about maintaining it and they'll still get really good good edge retention just maybe not quite as good as with some of the carbon steels okay so now we've we've decided on material yeah and we've decided that say i want a santuco yep. or, or w which style of knife i want what is the next step to actually choosing the knife? Yeah, so we, so to your point, we've decided steel type. Um, we're gonna say go with. We've decided that we're a home cook. We feel more comfortable with the Santoku over, say, for instance, the Guto, which is just a little bit too long. Um, and now I just pull down a whole bunch of knives uh, from the wall, and I get people picking them up and feeling them. Yeah. Um, the uh, the balance in Japanese knives is going to be a little bit further forward um, on this particular knife, pretty much right smack dab in the middle. But for instance, something like this is going to be balanced a little bit further forward. But there's going to be differences between every knife, right? So um, balance point is a big one. It it it, it kind of determines where the weight in the knife. Mm -hmm. is and and some people feel more comfortable with a, a blade balance further forward and some people feel more comfortable with a balance uh, further back me personally i like something that's balanced quite forward mm -hmm. i like a knife that's light overall um and and very thin um yeah. that's my preference i know yep. a lot of guys prefer something with a little bit more heft to it um, and they want it a little bit thicker at the yep. spine it just makes them feel like it's it's more substantial well and and so that that to me, that feeling in my hand is probably the most important to me yeah. when I'm choosing a knife. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, buying online can be tough for sure. Okay. Um, I try to, I do my absolute best to, to get product videos of all the knives that I carry done and, and put up on the website. I'm still in the process of doing so. But w what I try to convey in those videos is, is the balance point. E everything that you, you may want to know about the knife, I try to, to get across in those videos. Yep. How it feels, how light it is, how thin the blade. We look at the edge geometry, how thin it is behind the edge. Um, we look at the fit and finish of the knife, how the blade and the handle come together. Is the handle nice? Is it flush between the furl and the yep. handle? Um, is it good for lefties and righties? Or okay. is it good just for right-handed users? Um, what type of steel is it made from? Will it rust? Will it will it not? I, I try to get all that across in the videos and make it um, as easy for people as I possibly can online to buy a knife. To buy a knife. Yep. And I also make it very easy to return knives if they're not into it. Um, we accept returns with no questions asked and we pay for the return shipping as well. So, cool. Um, you're not stuck with a knife if you don't like it. So pretty, pretty painless. Pretty I like. Painless. To, I try to make it as painless as possible. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, I'm. I'm here trying to get people set up with the right knife for them. Um, is it easier to do it in store? Probably. Um, but can it be done online? Absolutely. Cool. Uh, do people show up with carrots? Uh, no, they don't need to because I have them all already there. <laughs> you do. I do. Cool. Um, it's 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 uh, it's hard to know which knife you're gonna like uh, if you don't get to cut with it a little okay. bit, right? Um, so um, carrots are a good one. Um, carrots, in my experience, really uh, show you what a knife can do. Um, they're a little bit on the harder, more durable side, okay. and they really seem to respond well to uh, knives that are very, very thin behind the edge. Um, that edge geometry is something we haven't really touched on, but um, the thinness behind the edge, or, or just the sort of way the blade comes to a point, okay. um, how high up on the blade does it start? For instance, okay. on most Japanese knives, it starts pretty much midway through the blade, starts yep. angling in, and then they put what's called a micro bevel on it. Um, so again, right at the edge, they'll increase their angle a little bit more and sharpen it again, and that adds a little bit of dur durability to the okay. edge of the knife. But a blade that's very, very thin behind the edge is not going to wedge an ingredient apart or cause it to sort of like push or, or ex tear almost. tear yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, a good yeah, yeah. um so, so these w uh, again i've made this point before but the first time you cut with a japanese knife it just feels like it it needs to it, that's its life purpose is to yep. go through things uh with as little effort as possible and that's a wonderful feeling in the kitchen yeah it really it really is it, yeah. it it's one of those if you're fighting with your knife cooking can be less enjoyable. Oh, 100%. Yes, yeah. 100%. I've had a lot of people tell me that they just, they like the cooking aspect, so the, the tossing stuff in a pan, uh, baking stuff in the oven, but they don't like the, the prep work. I love the prep work. I love the prep work. And that's something that Julie often yells at me. She's like, why did you cut these so small? Stop chopping. And it's like, but I enjoy. Yeah. I yeah, I enjoy that precision. I enjoy that aspect of, of the process of cooking. That's a great point because you could easily 
do a lot of what you do with a knife in, uh, in a food processor. Uh, if you're making Mirapaw, just throw a bunch of stuff in there and have it done in 30 seconds. It's not fun. But is that as fun? No. No, it's not fun. I would also make the argument that that like mulch definitely doesn't have the same no. feel as no. beautifully <laughs> chopped vegetables as no. well. Um, so, um, so yeah, so we've decided um, on the knife, we were getting people picking up and feeling stuff. Um, I've talked a little bit about my personal preference and I always incorporate that into the, the knife buying process. It shouldn't, I always try to empower people to make their own decision yeah. though. Okay. Um, I, I, I never push people towards anything. I don't try to push people towards the more expensive stuff or, or, you know, whatever. Um, I, I empower people, give people the knowledge that they need to make their own informed decision. So when we're, we're talking about expense in knives, does a costlier knife necessarily mean a better knife? In, in a lot of cases it does. Um, and I know it sounds like uh, I'm just trying to sh sell you a more expensive knife, um, but um, the more you're willing to spend, the more, typically the more you're gonna get out of the knife. There are definitely some of those like value picks out there um, that for whatever reason, they're, they're very affordable and they're very high performing. Um, I typically find the value picks in more of like the carbon steel range okay. so you have to be a little bit more diligent with their maintenance okay um a finish um that's commonly found in those more affordable ranges is what's called a kurouchi finish this guy here um with the, this black part yep. here um l the most difficult knife to maintain but because of the finish the labor required to make it is is quite a bit lower and therefore the price gets down i think though this knife looks will look really cool. Very I mean, it cool. looks really cool right now, but it yeah. will look really cool when it, when it develops that patina. Yes, absolutely. And that, and that goes back to the, if, if, you're, if you're interested in something that's going to change and develop character, um, carbon steel is for you. Um, if you want it to look the exact same forever, stainless steel is for you. Cool. So we'll end that here. Check out the online store um, and we'll come back and talk about knife maintenance. Perfect. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.